everyone. Welcome to the Pagan News on the Prairie Land Radio Network for Pagan Artist Spotlight. And this evening, I am joined by my co-host, as usual, Christy Mann. Also joined by us is uh, Reverend Edward Sott from the uh, Pagan Rights Coalition. And in, hopefully in a few minutes, we'll also be joined by our special guest, Oberon Zell. And uh, for those of you who are familiar with Oberon, uh, he's not exactly tech savvy. So uh, we're going to be <laughs> waiting for him to come in. Uh, I had to kind of hand walk him through the last time we talked a couple years ago. So, uh, yeah, this is normal. So, <laughs> But in the meantime, while we're waiting for Oberon to come in, I uh, wanted to let everyone know that... Uh, we have a lot going on here at Iowa Pagan News. We've got, we are filling dates up fast. And, Sorry. <laughs> and so basically, we've got, we're filling up uh, dates really fast here for March. Uh, we've already got half of the month already scheduled. We've only got like oh, nine or ten days left to fill. And I'm pretty sure we'll get those filled up here real fast, too. Uh, plus, yours truly is also in the midst of planning our very first Midwest Podcasters Conference that's going to be taking place next August. And this could be about mid-August. And it is definitely going to be a three-day event. Uh, more details can be coming, but we're in the, pl- the planning stages right now. We're talking to a lot of good people that uh, are going to be coming on board with us to help with the planning. I've already got speakers lined up, uh, trying to get some vendors to come in. And this is just, this is going to be a fun time for everybody. So stay tuned for further announcements. Check the videos that uh, I'll be posting on Facebook Live, also on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Uh, I still have to make a video for TikTok yet this evening, which I'll get around to doing. So, in the meantime, uh, Christy, tell us what's going on with Metaphysical Times right now. Well, we had some big major developments come up here the last couple of days. Um, Goodness, um, Ed and I have been working around the clock um, on a supplemental newsletter that's going to start going out monthly. We're calling it the full, the Metaphysical Times Full Moon. Um, mm-hmm. Everything in every issue is going to be kind of full moon focused. You'll have, we'll have articles, um, news, some stories that revolve around the full moon, um, and it's going to go out on the first on the first of every month. Um, so that's going to be an included part of it. It'll be an email subscription or an email newsletter. Um, and if we get enough reception, we are looking at putting it into print in August. Our friend Ed is going to be handling the print ver- the, the, the print side of that. So thanks so much, Ed, for, for stepping up to handle that for us. No problem. Uh, let's see that that's development. Number one, uh, Ostera has printed. Uh, should be going out by the end of by, by Friday. Should be in the mail and on its way out to everybody. Um, we had several new distributors sign up. Uh, a few of them got in before the Astera edition went out. Um, any that came in after the the twenty eighth, their first edition will be out when we hit publish on uh, the Beltane issue. Uh, we are looking for writers. We're, we're looking for news article submissions. Um, some stories, check the submission guidelines to find out whether or not your story will fit with what we're looking for. And uh, we are always looking for new distributors to carry the newspaper and get it out to your clients and customers. Excellent. Okay, Ed. Now, with you being the production manager for IAPN Radio, um I know that uh, you're working on uh, banners. That, uh, in fact, you just seen the uh, the one banner that we played for you at the beginning of the video here. Uh, that's one of them that he's made. He's making up uh, a couple of others. And uh, he's also going to be uh, working on production for the, logo, the new logo 
which is going to be for the conference coming up as well. So I'm keeping Ed quite busy. Yes, you are. You really are. <laughs> Both of you keep me quite busy, actually. <laughs> but I love my work. Amen. Uh, and mm -hmm. Earl, correction on the schedule, we have exactly seven spaces left. So gotcha. seven spaces left on the schedule, folks. If, you're go if you want to get into an interview or you want to find, if you know somebody who in the pagan community that wishes to be interviewed, please, by all means, reach out and get a hold of us because the, we're filling slots fast. Right. And we're already now into April with uh, some reservations as well. So, and that's uh, thanks to Christy. She's got, uh, I know she's got one for April and uh, I think, Ed, you've got another one, don't you? Not for April. I finished. Okay. I'm still. Po I'm still popping in March. So we got a couple coming up in March. We have some reach outs recently that uh, we're looking at some big reach outs that we've done. But I'm not gonna. I want to keep them a surprise because. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once you hear about these uh, names that are gonna be coming up here soon, everyone's gonna freak out. Yeah. So stay tuned, folks. You never knew know what's gonna happen with IAPN Radio. We mm -hmm. yeah we have uh we have part three with Kavena, with Kavena in April. Yeah, we do. Yep. Thank you for the reminder on that. The thirteenth, she's going to be joining us again. I'm excited. Yep. And then eventually, uh, eventually I'm going to get uh, Gypsy Healer in on this, so that uh, we can get her in on uh, the show. Uh, she's starting a new venture, by the way. She's, uh, I caught wind that she is starting up a new uh, uh, home caregiver service and nice. approaching it with the holistic side. So, oh, that'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. Let's do a shout out to Patsy because she's joined us. I popped it up there yep. twice, but we've been talking about everybody else. <laughs> Patsy, thanks for joining us once again. It's great to see you. Yep, it's always good to have Patsy join us, and I'm pretty sure that uh, we'll have others uh, joining us yet this evening as well. Uh, as I know that uh, hopefully Ascension is going to be chiming in here because he's a friend of Oberon's. Once we can get Oberon uh, situated and up and going here, uh, like you said, this is, uh, <laughs> I'm used to this with Oberon. <laughs> he is not tax savvy whatsoever. And, but uh, usually I try to give him as much assistance as possible to get him situated. <laughs> Thank you okay. for the broadcast. Yep. And pa uh, Patsy just made the comment so that she's always happy to be here and to share our broadcast. So, Thank you, Patsy, for that. Appreciate it. Okay, now, while we're still waiting on Oberon, uh, tell you what we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and do a replay of uh, the video from uh, from Sencha. His, that video was fantastic. Uh, I want to be able to share it with everybody again. And that way people can uh, enjoy it. So give me just a second here, folks. And this is going to be uh, uh, the new video, the latest video from Sencha Skiing. I never felt the spirit in temples made by men. But the forest called to me as a child I tried to understand it, to follow where you led But I only felt at home there in the wild For a long time I pretended to go where you had gone Try to make you happy with your choice 
But I soon grew tired of make-believe When the goddess called to me There in the woods I found her voice You have your own path But I went another way The door is open from my side The choice is yours You can't agree to disagree You don't have to run and hide Hate the sin but love the sinner That's what I've heard you say To justify the closing of your doors But when it comes to hating This is what you need to know The hating is your God's job, not yours I know our paths are different And we both have different ways But the pathway doesn't matter in the end If you can set aside your judgment I'll try to do the same Because I know we both could use a friend You have your own path But I went another way The door is open from my side The choice is yours We can't agree to disagree You don't have to run and hide in them all In the end I think we both shall seek the light You chose to shut me out because you think that I'm wrong But self-righteousness just doesn't make you right You turned your back on me because I went another way Your decisions, your loss, and not mine I'll be waiting patiently If you ever change your mind In the meantime, me and mine Are doing fine You have your own path But I went another way The door is open From my side The choice is yours We can't agree to disagree You don't have to run and hide You have your own path But I went another way The door is open From my side The choice is yours, we can't agree to disagree, you don't have to run and hide, you don't have to run and hide. Uh oh. It's just, it's just saying uh, Firefox is not responding. That's my browser thing that links me to Facebook. And it just doesn't do it. You know, it says my options are to close the program and or wait for the program to respond. And I've tried huh. both. 
you know, it, but it's just totally frozen. It's been that way now for a half hour, and I just don't know what to do. Um, okay. You, am I screwing things up for you with this? Well, no, not necessarily, no. Uh, I'll tell you what, we're just going to keep right on trucking along here, and uh, we're going to cover a few topics, and then, uh, uh, yeah, if, tell you what, now, if we need to uh, reschedule, we can do that. That's not a problem. And uh, I'll get with you early to make sure we get things set up with you, okay? All right. Well, everything had been working just fine. It was just not a problem at all. And then I was getting set up for your show, and um, and suddenly everything was just frozen. And it wouldn't do anything. And I, I, I had to <laughs> manually push the button to shut it down. I couldn't even do the, the restart thing. Nothing worked. The little Windows thing. Nothing. Oh, be darned. Okay. Nothing's happening. Just what browser are you? What browser are you using? Around and around and around. And I have no idea how long this is going to happen here. It's very frustrating. I'm just going to tear my hair out here, you know? I'm so well, Don't worry about that. We have him yeah. on the phone. Let's do the interview over the phone. <laughs> over on, what browser are you using? Okay. Uh, okay. Well, tell you what. See how we got you on the phone. I got you on speakerphone. Uh, we'll uh, tell you what. We're going to do the interview this way. <laughs> I see. Well, who's that? Yeah, because uh, basically we got you on the mic, so uh, no problem there. Um, okay, so now since on the video call. Yeah, we'll just we'll just do it this way. Uh, shouldn't be a problem at all. Now, uh, since how it's been two years since the last time you and I actually sat down and talked, what's been going on up in your neck of the woods? Well, let's see. Where were we last time we talked? Where was I? When well, you were right. just, uh, let's see. I think, that, were you already up at the long house back then? Uh, I got up here in June of 2020, uh, so I, I don't know exactly. Okay, where. so that was before you went, that's, yeah, that was before your move then. Okay. Yeah, for a few months before that, I was in Nashville for a while, and, um, and then I was on the road for quite a while. Okay. Um, okay, so... What have you been, uh, how to say, what you've been up to since you got up there to the longhouse? Well, uh, several things. One is being involved in the longhouse um, community and its efforts. I got here, uh, everything was shut down, of course, for the, uh, for the COVID thing, which has really made it difficult. This is a retreat center, and it was really counting on having the usual events that pay the bills and, and quite nicely, but everything has been shut down with the COVID, so it's been kind of rough. So I've been working on, um, with the community, trying to keep things going and all. But from my own point of view, I've been enjoying this as a isolation, as a writer's retreat. I've been writing books like crazy. I've gotten five books um, completed and published since I've been here. Cool. We have another one out in another month or so. I'll have another one ready to go. Okay, so that's going to fall right down my co-host, uh, my co-host Christie's alley, because uh, she's also an author, and she's also recently bought the Metaphysical Times newspaper. Oh, marvelous. Wow, that's great. Well, we can maybe do a uh, something for the paper about the new book when it comes out, or any of the ones I've got. I've really been very productive lately. <laughs> yes, so absolutely. We'll be reaching out to you to do that. Christy's definitely going to be reaching out to you to get that done. Um, so let's see. What's the? Do you have titles for your books now? Oh, yes. Well, let's see if I can go through them. The uh, first one that I got out was in uh, uh, 2020, and that was uh, I worked with uh, uh, Judith Fennelly, who was the death doula for Morning Glory's passing. And we worked together to turn out a book that was kind of a handbook for home funerals and green burials and everything that you want to know, a complete guide for that. Uh, and it's called Death Rights and Rights. And it's that was pretty good. And it started off being a much larger project. And we realized that we actually ended up with two books. So <laughs> I went on to do the second book, which is more my 
much more of my work than hers. Uh, really not much of hers in the second one. And it's called uh, That Undiscovered Country, A Traveler's Guide to the Afterlife. And that was a lot of fun. And so the first book, The Death Rights and Rights, was uh, how to deal with the dying. And the second one is The Journey of the Dying. It's kind of a handbook for the recently deceased kind of a thing. And that, that was a lot of fun because I got to do a lot of illustrations illustrating the afterlife scenarios and maps of different cultures. So that one came out. And then, um, and then after that, I, uh, I did one called Goodbye, Jesus, I've Gone Home to Mother. It was a compilation of stories of people who had been Christians and some clergy and had left the church and come over to paganism. And that's uh, that was a lot of fun and something that I've been kind of wanting to do for a long time, collecting these stories. So, so that came out. And then the, the next one is one that I've been working on, sort of, over the past 20 years. And it was a children's book, a great big, full color, spectacular, um, 11 by 17, massive children's book called um, Song of Gaia. And that is quite a project that I'm really very pleased with. That. It's really quite beautiful. So that one came out. Actually, it's not 11 by 17. Sorry, it's eight and a half by 11 horizontal, a horizontal children's book. I think full color, beautiful. Thing. And then, um, then I got working on um, Llewellyn. Decided that they were going to uh, not continue uh, Morning Glories in my autobiography, The Wizard and the Witch. And they turned over all the rights. And my new publisher uh, said that they wanted to pick it up and do <coughs> the full expanded version because the published version that Llewellyn did was really only half of the original manuscript because they, it was just too much. It was it would have been huge. And they said it would cost the door to stop, but really too much for them to publish or lift. So, so I have a project of upgrading that to a two volume version that, that restored all the original material that had been trimmed out for the for the Llewellyn version. And so now we've got a accurate two volume version of The Wizard and the Witch, um, which is pretty epic. And then after that, um, I picked up on one that I've been wanting to do for the last 50 years. And it's kind of a summation of articles and materials and things that I've been collecting and artwork and all. It's called Gaia Genesis, Conception and Birth of the Living Earth. And this is really kind of a magnum opus for me. It's the, it's the book that puts in one place everything from my original uh, vision that I had way back in 1970 and the early history of the Church of All Worlds and the pagan movement and the growth of the Gaia theology for the community and it's loaded with pictures and, and stories and it's quite an epic thing. It's going to probably come in just over 400 pages. So about, yeah, I'm, I'm a little over 300 pages into the formatting. Most of the writing is done the only things that still remain in the writing stage are a few of the appendices, but the main text is completed, but I have an editor that I'm working with who is really quite wonderful. So, um, you know, as fast as she's editing the material, then I'm formatting it into the final copy and selecting the graphics and doing all that stuff. And I hope to have it completed by the end of this month and then go off to the publisher and I'm kind of shooting to have it come out on uh, Earth Day, which is April twenty second. So that's my goal there. Cool. Now, Christy, I know this is going to be right down your alley. There, dear. Do you got questions for him? What was that? Do you have any questions for Oberon? Since so this is kind of right down your alley. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I'm. I'm trying to get things typed into the comments so people can find the books. Um, what is the title of the the, the newest one? And when's it coming out? I, I couldn't hear that. That was all. Okay. Yeah. She wanted to know what was the title of that, uh, your your newest one that you've got? Uh, the newest one that's published or the one I'm working on? That you've got published. The most recent one published is the um, updated, expanded two volume edition of The Wizard and the Witch. 
And all of my books are on Amazon, so all you got to do to find them is just put my name into the search bar, and and all of my books will pop up right there. What's Excellent. the name of the one? What's the name of the one that's coming that's not been published yet? And what's yeah, the what's the name of the one that's coming that has not been published yet? The one I'm working on is called Gaia Genesis. That's G R A E A G E N I S I S. Gaia Genesis Conception and Birth of the Living Earth. Yep. That's and it. that you said that one's going to be the big one. Yep. I'm really, really excited about this. This is one I've been gathering material for and writing about and lecturing about for 50 years now. Finally, it's coming out. <laughs> and that's going to be your two-parter, right? No, it'll be one part. It'll oh. Be one big, uh, a little over 400 pages, but uh, enough to be one volume. Yowzers. <laughs> Yowzers indeed. You like I, writing film books, don't you? You know, that wasn't really my idea. I have written a few that aren't that big. I mean, Circles and Ceremonies and, and um, uh, Green Egg Omelette and Death Rites and Rice and Goodbye Jesus and Undiscovered Country were all by, you know, Less than 300 pages, books. Um, you know, maybe 200 pages or so in there somewhere. But um, some of them just take a lot more. <laughs> they do. Yeah. And then, of course, there was my, the ones that I started with, the memoir for the Apprentice Wizard and the companion for the Apprentice Wizard and the um, the bestiary, the wizard's bestiary. All of those were large size formats and, uh, and uh, very loaded with, with uh, graphics. I really like to have lots of graphics, and I like to have them embedded in the text as much as possible so that the text kind of flows around the graphics and enhances them. I don't like to turn the pages and just see nothing but gray stuff. Yet. Cool. Uh, our friend Patsy who has been uh, uh, tuning in to us partially on all of our sessions here uh, uh yeah, basically, uh, she's saying thank you so much for your books because uh, a lot of people are going to get a lot of good information from them. Well, I hope so. My my idea for pretty much everything I do, my books, my art, um, my statuary, everything, is something that I want to have. You know, I, mean, I have wanted for a long time, and it doesn't exist already, so I have to create it. And if it had already existed, I wouldn't feel the need to have to create it, and that would be fine too. But um, uh, but that's really the deal, and I kind of hope that people out there have the same attitude that I do and would like the same stuff. And so far, that's that's worked. You know, if I put out something that I like, evidently right. other people do. That was the policy for Green Egg. The reissue of Green Egg, I just loaded it up with stuff that I wanted to read in a magazine. And if it wasn't something I wanted to read cover to cover, I would publish it. <laughs> Hmm. Cool. Now, yeah, let's see. Last night we had a chance to talk with uh, your friend Sencha, who is also up in your neck of the woods. Uh huh. Because uh, we had uh, we had a chance to talk with him and get to know him. Sees how uh, he and his wife uh, moved up to your neck of the woods about two years ago, and. Uh, we even played uh, his latest video that he's got that basically shows both you with him and uh, oh, also Selena. All right. Wonderful. Well, that's nice. That's good. Well, I'm, I wish that we could be doing the video part for me, but I'm still, you know, my, my uh, laptop is still not responding at all. And I don't understand it. The, uh, huh. There's nothing wrong with the um, internet connection. That's all there, but the... But it just won't come up. Yeah, uh, basically, you've got issues with gremlins up there. Definitely, it's extremely, it's <laughs> extremely weird. Oh, uh, we've also got. Uh, thing is, I'm going to have a breakthrough, and suddenly it's going to show up here, and we can we can see each other. But so far, you know, despite my best efforts, I'm not getting any results here. Well, we're making this work just fine, so it's all good. Now, we've also got uh, my friend, uh, Reverend Edward Sott, with us tonight. He's with the Pagan Rights Coalition, and uh, I know that he's been tuning in uh, 
he's been listening intently. Uh, you got any questions for uh, Oberon tonight? Well, I have a comment, actually. I absolutely love your statuary, Oberon. You are the most amazing statuary I've ever seen. I mean, I want half of them. Yeah, he loves your statuary. Oh, oh, well, that's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, I've done quite a lot of those. It's been a long time since I've done any, though. It seems doesn't even seem possible. But I did um, from uh, 1990 to 2000. I did about 50 pieces. The and God. I didn't have a studio anymore after that. So I haven't been able to do anything new. The but the God 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 God. my it's signature like piece... I've been I've been wanting to have it in different sizes, but I had to wait for the technology to catch up. And finally, the technology for scanning and 3D printing caught up with my vision. And so now we have her in three in four different sizes, from from a little tiny dashboard size to a great big um, uh, two foot tall version, which I'm really happy with. And they're really beautiful. So that's kind of neat. Excellent, excellent. And where can people find your statuary? Well, um, my uh, distributor is um, and, and business partner is um, is Jay DeForest, and he's uh, the website is Millennial Gaia. Um, I guess just look up Millennial Gaia, and that'll take you to the website. And everything that's currently available is there. A lot of my statues have cur are currently out of stock, and I'm negotiating with my company to um to to reissue a number of them that were out of but the gaia is top of the line and it's well available in all their sizes and bronze as well as painted quite nice so just look up millennial gaia and uh, we'll find it yep we've got your uh we've got the site posted up on the video here so that uh, people know exactly where to go to find your statuary Oh, that's great. You got it there. MillennialGaia.com. Uh, the millennial Gaia.com actually is what it says here. But good. Excellent. <laughs> Christy, you got anything else for him? Um, let's see. May in May. Um yeah. <laughs> All right, so She's looking at the schedule right now. <laughs> the, the big question is, why did it take 50 years? I mean, you oh, said you were working know, on it for 50 years. Why yeah, did it she, take that long? Yeah, she wants to know why that, uh, it's taken you 50 years to put together that new one. Yeah, I wonder about that myself. Because um, I had in mind really wanting to do it pretty early on. But I got caught up in other stuff for for many years. The Green Egg occupied all of my writing and publishing attention, and uh, it wasn't until I was able to pass that off to other people that it kind of freed me up, and I could start writing books. You know, I didn't write my first book until twenty. Um, well, I started in twenty o two, really. Um, so uh, because I've been publishing a magazine, but at that particular point, um, I wasn't doing that, and so I got to write books. And um, then there were all these ones that kind of were commissioned. You know, my publisher said, I want you to write a book that will, you know, reach the Harry Potter generation, for example. So I did the grimoire, and then they wanted a, a follow-up on that one. So I did the companion. And then, you know, it was like one thing after another with publishers wanting stuff from me. And it just kept, and in the meantime, I kept writing more stuff that would go into the Gaia book and doing lectures and workshops and, and keeping the recording and doing more art. And eventually, built and keeping it all in a folder, and eventually it got to be quite a lot. <laughs> so I finally got to the point where all my other stuff that was on the list is out of the way, and now this is what's on the table. But I got more to come. You know, this isn't the end of it. I, <laughs> um, I've got a whole list of books uh, still in the hopper. You know, um, yeah. the next one I want to do, although I may have something else I have to do in between, but the next one that's on my own mind is called A Wizard's Guide to Women. And I think that should be interesting. Very. Oh, yeah, that was definitely going to be interesting. <laughs> you should have seen the look on Christy's face for that one. <laughs> well, it's come to my attention that there's a lot about women that a lot of guys don't seem to know and need to know. And um, I. <laughs> 
I've had a fair amount of experience with wonderful, amazing women, and most of them are eager to contribute to something like this. So, absolutely, lots of, uh, lots of contributions from many women as a part of it. <laughs> well, I mean, I think that was, okay. That would be a good thing in a way, and uh, I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about other ways, but um, <laughs> I'll go with it. <laughs> right. There you go. Well, I've been I, getting uh, the yeah, input. Now, if it was I just... Whole that too. You know, I, got, I, I remember getting a lesson once from uh, Robert Heinlein. He was talking to me about how he wrote Stranger of Strange Land and other books. And what he would do was that he had boxes. Um and when he got an idea, he would write it down on a three by five card and stick it in the box. And um, it was for whatever book it might come with. And he'd have a title and, and some concepts. And eventually, when the box had enough cards in it, he'd have a book. So I kind of been doing that with folders. I have little folders on my desktop here for all these book ideas that I have. And I, when I get an idea or write something or anything like that, I stick it in the folder. And eventually, the folder is full enough to write a book. Are you right. still taking submissions for that box? Are you still okay? Are you still taking submissions for that box? Oh, all the time. Um, I'm. Uh, uh, depends on what book we're talking about. These ones that are finished, you know, are all wrapped up. I had the uh, uh, the Goodbye Jesus, I've Gone Home to Mother book was a lot of submissions that I was collecting there. But I will definitely be now next turning my attention to soliciting contributions for the Wizard's Guide to Women. So I'm going to be putting out a word about that at some point. I'll send one. <laughs> but I, I'll take them any time. You know, if I get something and somebody writes, here's something that you might want to use in a book, I'll stick it in a folder and keep track of who it is and all that. And there we go. I have a couple um, of them I'll be sending. Yeah, Christy said that uh, she's got a couple of them she's going to be sending your way. Excellent. I will look forward to it, Christy. <laughs> and Pat, have any questions? Patsy, have any questions? Yeah, we're gonna see if uh gonna see if we get uh, questions here coming in. Uh as Patsy is listening intently and I have a feeling we're gonna have a few more joining us here shortly. But uh uh Ed, you got any other questions for him? I got another co comment. I uh I did that once with a book, writing a novel. I wrote a whole novel on scrap pieces of paper, tossed it all in a box, dumped it on my kitchen table, and my brother mm. threw it away on me. Ruined my whole Oh, life. shoot. Uh, Ed had uh, done the same thing that you did. He had written out uh, stuff on pieces of paper, tossed them into a box, and he went to go, he went to go dump them out on the kitchen table, and his brother wound up tossing them. Oh, no. Oh, that's terrible. Well, I don't have a physical box. I just have folders on my laptop. So, And some of them have been there for quite a while. You know? But, um, yeah, that's terrible. That's an awful one like that. Wow. Oh, uh, Patsy wants to know the uh, book on death rights. When was that published? Uh, last year. It came out uh, last spring. And it's... Um, well, wait, no, no, two, there's two of them. The, the book on death rights and rights came out in December of 2020. And the follow-up book on the undiscovered country came out, um, I guess, last summer sometime. Early in the summer. Because I did other books after that. So, yeah. I kind of get, get distracted with the, when I complete the book versus when it actually hits the stands. But um, one of my publishers got a pretty quick turnaround. Llewellyn has a really long turnaround, like a year from the time we get the submitted manuscript. Or something. But um, Black Moon, that I'm doing most of my stuff with currently, gets them out much quicker, like about a month after the submission is in. So I'm, going, I'm working with them at the moment. Nice. And so basically, you know, you said you still got quite. Uh, quite a few more books to write yet, though, right? Yep. On the inside of my uh, each of my books, I have a little list of books I've published and books in process. 
<laughs> you can see that my roots here, you know, of uh, stuff that's in, like waiting to go kind of stuff. Nice, nice. Uh, okay, so with uh, you being not being able to get out and about uh, because of COVID and all, uh, besides writing your books, I mean, have you been able to uh, do anything else up in there? Well, I have actually attended a few festivals. I mean, I'm, I'm all totally vaccinated and boosted and all of that stuff, so I'm not really worried myself. The thing is that a lot of the events have just been shut down. But if somebody wants right. to bring me out to somewhere and pay my way and put me up, I'll go. But there haven't been a lot of those. Last year, though, um, uh, in 2020, everything was canceled. But then everything went online, which was kind of interesting. Everything started operating with Zoom. And it was just a huge breakthrough that we had just um, we just discovered Zoom, really. It had come up um, at the Parliament of World Religions in, let's see, what was it, 2018, that I attended in Toronto, we met a guy there who was uh, really advocating for Zoom. He was involved in that a guy named Philip. And so, you know, he just buttonholed me in the hallway and sat down and talked and said, you know, you really need this. And so they got all turned on to it and told everybody about it. And we started using it just in time, you know, so that by the time we've gotten used to using it for things like, um, Oh, meetings, you know, board meetings for people who are all over the place because mm -hmm. you know, it was very useful for Church of All Worlds because we're, we're a global church. We've got people all over the world. And this was a great way that we could, um, you know, be in contact with our people. And then when COVID hit, the Zoom thing that everybody was using was absolutely perfect. So as far as I know, the first festival event that was done on it, Pagan Festival, was the Aquarian Tabernacle Church up in this neck of the woods that put on their spring mysteries right. on Zoom that year in 2020. Yep. Which was pretty cool, actually. They did an amazing job. They hadn't gotten to the backgrounds yet, which was would have been helpful, but at least they were there. They had all their characters and they moved the cameras from person to person and their own costume and it was great. And it was only just a few weeks after that that the option for having uh, Zoom backgrounds appeared and so when it became time for the Church of All Worlds Mysteries in the fall, we were able to have all of our characters in appropriate backgrounds, whether it was, you know, temples or the underworld or whatever it was. And that was neat. So I've been kind of working with that. But that, with that, without as much travel, I've been much freed up to actually, you know, do my own writing and work, which I really appreciate. And it's hard to get a writer's retreat, you know. You you write books yep. and then people want to have you go on speaking tours and talk about them. But when you're doing that, you're not writing. <laughs> Very true. And yeah, I remember when uh, ATC was having their event in 2020. I was actually supposed to be a part of that, but I got sidetracked with a couple of the projects. So I was not able to be a part of it. So I, they wanted me to take the possession of Hephaestus for that, you know, but um, I couldn't do it because there was just too much else going on. And they had somebody else who did a wonderful job. But it was it was quite a thing, though. I, mean, I was really glad it worked that way. And they're still doing that. Um, they haven't really gotten back in to line yet. But things are starting to loosen up. Um, and I think that we are seeing the tail end of that whole epidemic this year for practical yep. reasons, that is. I mean, I expect the disease will still be going around, but the vaccination levels and the uh, you know, the rest of it, I think, is going to reduce down to a place where people aren't going to be so isolated anymore. Right. Yeah, because I believe that uh, festival season is going to be taking place this year, from what I've been hearing. It is. Well, last year, um, Starwood had their festival live, and I went to that. And Hexfest in New Orleans went on last year in July, and I attended that. Uh, Puff Pagan Unity Festival in um, uh, Tennessee, which I've done before, uh, didn't happen. And I don't know if they're going to do it this year, but I'm signed up for the Nashville Pagan Pride this fall. So it's starting to happen. It's starting to come open. Yep. The and only I'm one that uh, I'm aware of that is not going to be taking place this year is Three Gates. Uh, oh, they're, yeah. They've got a big construction project going on on the grounds during that time. So they elected not to have the 
gathering this year, but uh, it is going to be scheduled for next year. Oh, good. Well, I would be delighted to go back again. I love those guys. I love all these festivals everywhere, you know, and, and it's a wonderful thing for me because um, I've got multiple levels of, of uh, interest, you know, in the festivals and events. Mm -hmm. It basically comes from the fact that when I was growing up, I felt I was such a changeling. I didn't have any people that I could consider myself to be a part of, you know, I was uh, ugly duckling and all that stuff. And so my search, my quest, the great drive in my life is to find my people. And that didn't actually happen until I got into college. And then I started meeting other people who were like me. And that was transformative. And out of that, uh, forming a little group of folks, we eventually, uh, we had a, we formed our own little water brotherhood because Stranger in a Strange Land came out the same year that I started college. And so we expanded that. And um, one thing led to another, <laughs> the Church of All Worlds and then the pagan movement. And now I have my people everywhere in the world, I can go anywhere in the world, be right at home. And we all can. And it's a wonderful thing. It really is to yep. be having our people, you know. And, and what's neat is that we're not a people united by a common nationality or, or right. um, you know, any of the stuff that many, many people think of as identifying their people, genetic or racial or national or whatever it is, language. That's not what unites us. What unites us is our our sure understanding that we are children of the same mother, you know, and that we are all kin on that level. Right. And that our diversity, the incredible diversity of our community is not what, it doesn't pull us apart. It brings us together. We get to share this wonderful a cornucopia, this uh, marvelous potluck of all of our different traditions. Absolutely. Wow. That is so, so cool. You know? Yep. We definitely agree yeah. there. Is uh that's what that's what our whole goal here is and always has been is to bring the community together and get people to stand with each other and support each other work yeah, together I think yeah. that is a wonderful a wonderful thing and that's what i've been doing all my life is whatever i can do for this ah, and uh and it continues and, and writing books is a part of that my my one of the things that I find really neat myself is that a little bit of me is embedded everywhere in the community. You know, That's true. I see, um, you know, ritual elements that I created are are incorporating the people's rituals everywhere. Um, the books that I've written are well read and referenced for people. My statues are on people's altars. My jewelry is around people's necks, and you know, people wear my t-shirts and have my posters <laughs> on the walls. And uh, uh, listening to his really music, thing to go traveling around as I did for a couple of years on my great walkabout all, right. all over the entire Western Hemisphere, really. And everywhere I go, there I am. <laughs> you know, yep. Uh, from, uh, Christy uh, even mentioned your music. Well, I don't have music per se. That's I'm not a musician. Um, <laughs> I wish I could be, but I'm not. But that's another wonderful thing for those who are, is that wherever they go, there's the music. Right. Um, I'm looking yeah. on, I, I, I went and YouTubed well, and I, I came I'm across. I'm not a musician, but I have, uh, I have wonderful connections with, with many of the great pagan musicians that are out there, like, you know, Wendy Ruhr and Stooge and Tawatha Day and mm -hmm. many of them. Yep. Wonderful okay. Wonderful Christy, what were you looking up? I was looking. I was looking for music to find out where else I could find him. Um, and there is an Ides of Oberon called "Good Morning Glory." On oh, YouTube. there is. A, there is a, a video on YouTube. Uh, what was the name of it, Christy? It says Ides of Oberon. Good oh, Ides of Glory. Oberon. Oh yeah, right. Well, I have a sh I have a monthly show that I do on the fifteenth of every month. I've been doing that for quite a while now and um it's called the ides of oberon that seemed like a clever title since it, so i do it on the 15th and so it's a different day of the week every month because it shifts around obviously except for next month this month uh, february and march have the same days but otherwise okay and, patsy uh, which uh, uh which <laughs> website are you referring to sorry oh patsy had a question that she's Trying to figure out which website. Uh, so I'm getting her to elaborate more on that to see 
uh, which website she was talking about. Um, but uh, now the, the Eyes of Oberon is on YouTube. Is that's where Christy was uh, finding it? Plus, uh, you also have uh, you also have your own group as well on Facebook. Um, yeah, I do. Got all that stuff. You know, unfortunately, I don't have as much time to participate in all these different groups. So people keep inviting me to join them, and and you know, <laughs> come on and stuff. And I really don't have time for it. I'm. I'm Trying to write books, so I, just, I kind of feel neglectful about some of that. I really don't spend as much time doing my um, Facebook stuff and responding to messages and requests and and um, email and texts and who knows what all. I just can't keep up with it. it has some many days. That's all I do all day is just deal with the messages that come in and don't right. do any writing. Room. And other days I just sit down and I don't even do the messages. I just write. Because that's what I really want to do. That's my job. Yep, I understand that, and I'm hoping that uh, I'll be able to get out to festival season this year. And um, and who knows, uh, we may wind up crossing paths eventually. Well, I expect that will be the case. Where are you living? Yeah, because uh, I'm I'm here in Iowa, so I'm right. Uh, in fact, I'm straight north of uh, uh, Alfred. Right. Well, uh, he won't be having the um, three gates this year. As you right. Said, but Stormy will be, and they're in the southeastern corner of Ohio. Um, I don't. I have not heard yet um, uh, whether or not Puff is going to go on this year. But I definitely know that the folks at um, at Hex are going to be doing Hex Fest again this year. Okay. So Which is down New Orleans. Yeah, that's in New Orleans. Oh, and I went to the um, uh, Mountain Mabon in um, uh, New Mexico last year. That, they had that. It was All of these are a lot smaller, of course, with a lot of people staying away. And But that's kind of neat and interestingly intimate because that's one of the things that's happened over the years is festivals have gone from small little groups to huge gatherings of hundreds. A few cases, over a thousand people in well, and, the uh, one down in New Mexico is there. not all that far from Christy because she's uh, just up in Utah. Ah, well, that's not bad at all. If we have anything up in this northwest here, but I don't know um, if there will be. I'm looking for that, though. I'm working here right now at the Longhouse, um, creating an alliance, a Longhouse alliance of the various pagan groups in the Pacific Northwest and, and getting them together into a, a coherent um, association. And then we can plan some events together. That we're, instead of, the way it's been working is the Longhouse basically has been just leasing itself out to people who want to, you know, rent it out for a weekend. And that's kind of what it's been mm -hmm. done. But it's been individual groups. We haven't put on any events of our own. And I really want to do that. I want to sponsor some big events. So working on that too. Cool. All these too many things. When I start enumerating all the things I'm trying to deal with, and it just becomes overwhelming. <laughs> I right. think it's a great school, the truth of all worlds, and 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 green egg, and my writing, and my longhouse, and all this stuff. Ah, <sighs> but I'm, well, one of the things is that my travels have been curtailed somewhat. Um, for the past couple of years, I've not been able to travel to other countries simply because of the complications of having COVID. I kind right. of missed that because right. there were plans to go to uh, various places, and those all got shut down. So I look forward to being able to, uh, once again, get into some of the international travels. Cool. Okay, so uh, tell people where they can at least uh, send submissions to you for ideas for your books and um, and where they can correspond with you. Well, the, my best way of reaching me correspondingly is through email. I, I'm totally on top of that. I check my email regularly because I'm sending stuff and having to do the send receive. So I'm getting the messages in. Messages that come by other places like Facebook and, and stuff, you know, I often don't get around to them. And LinkedIn, I hardly ever check the LinkedIn messages. Um, but my email address is available. It's Oberon 
at mcn.org. That's Mary Charlie Nancy having an orgy. And um, <laughs> so that's, um, if you have something you'd like to submit or contact me, um, send me an email. I'll try to check them all out and I'll respond um, as, as soon as I can. Give us that email and address and one more time. Please check out uh, my books. I really, um, you know, I really need to sell books. That's, that's what keeps me uh, keeps me going here, keeps the roof over my head. So, like I said, they're all available on Amazon. And my statuary, as much as is currently available, is all available through bumalumioguia.com. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, you know, I have a personal website, uh, but it just mostly has, you know, kind of information and stuff. Because right. I'm not really actively doing anything with it. It just sits there. Okay. And if you want to know more about me, you can just look me up on well, actually, you know, just Google my name and we've got all kinds of stuff. It all shows up that way. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so your email once again is Oberon at mcn.org. That's correct. MaryCharlieNancy.org. Gotcha. That is right. All, all right. right. Okay, now, we're going to let you go for right now, and then uh, we'll definitely be staying in touch and getting caught up. And then, uh, yeah, I'll... Uh, we'll be sure to uh, get with you early to see if we can get that uh, laptop to cooperate. I know it still hasn't in all this time. It's been over an, an hour, almost an hour and a half, and it's just sitting there not doing it, little lines and circles going around and around. So well, do what I do. Threaten it with a baseball bat. <laughs> yeah, good idea. Striking <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you, and um, I did enjoy the talk. I, you know, and I do look forward to when we can do this in a proper way video. So, blessed be, and farewell to everybody. Thanks. All right, Bye. have a good night, thank uh, Oberon. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we will definitely be in touch. All right, you too. Bye now. Good night. Okay, folks, seeing as how, like I said, seeing as how it wasn't really in video, but at least we were able to carry on the interview uh, with him on the phone. Uh, I think we still had a good time uh, sharing stories and stuff with him, and definitely looking forward to uh, getting him uh, live on the show here eventually. <laughs> so... Uh, any other closing remarks from either one of you two? That was a great show. Thanks to everybody. Thanks, super thanks for to Patsy for for coming in and being really engaging with us. That helps us out a lot. Yeah, thanks, so Patsy, for being. Yeah, if you guys can join us and and drop into the comments, you're helping the radio station just showing up, watching the show, and, and talking with us in the comments. So please keep doing that, Patsy, and you guys come join us. Yep, we do appreciate it a lot. Is uh, even though things were kind of unorthodox tonight, but we still made it work. So that's what that's how we that's how we that's roll. how we roll. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yep, uh, and you got to admit that Oberon is a character. Oh, he sure is. I enjoy I enjoyed his com commentary. Yeah, it, was, he's, it was a good show. I, 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 we did not disappoint tonight. I don't think. No, we did definitely did not disappoint in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I always enjoy talking with Oberon and listening to his stories. And I did not know that. I did not know that he was writing that many books. Good grief! I had no idea. I mean, that's how I how I recognize the name. Um, when when because. It wasn't necessarily a pagan thing. I knew him as an author. I didn't realize, you know, I mean. The, I recognize, yeah, I it, recognize it was, him by his statuary because he has this god, moon god and goddess statue that I fell in love with years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah so very, very many aspects of Oberon is in everything, out, even outside of the pagan community that we've all experienced and mm -hmm. come into connection with. And, and I think that's just. That's a huge testament to what he's doing to get out into the world and connect people. I think that's huge. Yeah. I'm looking he's, forward to getting with him and getting an, an interview scheduled for the author thing, for, for, for the author chats. He's going to, he's on the list. 
Mm -hmm. He is right up there with Selena and Raymond. Mm -hmm. He is right up there with them. Yeah. Yeah. The late Raymond Buckland. Yep. So, okay, folks, this has been another edition of Iowa Pagan News on the Prairie Land Radio Network. This has been Pagan Artist Spotlight. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Patsy, thank you for tuning in as usual. We appreciate you a lot. And we look forward to uh, seeing everybody again. Now, tomorrow we have who? Gina Pace, author of the Pagan Tarot. Yep, we have Gina Pace. That's going to be uh, uh, Ed and myself doing that interview. So be sure to stay tuned for announcements. We'll get those out tonight so that people can tune in and join us. So with that being in mind, I'm going to wish everyone pleasant journeys. Have a good evening. Stay tuned for uh, another session tomorrow night. And then, like I said, we got a lot more coming up for next week. Uh, I've got, let's see. Shoot. Uh, let's see. I've got a music. Uh, let's see. Week Fire on Sunday. We've got uh, Ann Walsh for Monday. Uh, we've got... Uh, Ruck, Zuck, uh, Faith Kelly on Tuesday, Dream Aria on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. We do have Charles Lincoln coming up on Friday. Yep. Charles Lincoln on Friday. Yep. Thursday we have, I believe I have Starhawk on what on what one of these days coming up this week. Okay. So yeah, stay tuned for more announcements coming up. Like I said, we are filling dates rapidly here rapidly. at IPN Rio. Definitely. All right, guys. Have a good night. We are out of here for the night. Thank you for tuning in.